Hello again, MMA True Believers. I am Jason Burgos for SureDog.com. And my guest today is a participant in the UFC's ESPN on uh, ESPN 9 card on May 30th. On that night, he will step into the octagon for the 14th time to face former LFA flyweight champion Casey Kenny. And that man is the last samurai himself, Louis Smolka. Mr. The Last Sir. Thank you for the time today to talk this upcoming return to the Octagon. Hey, man. Thank you for having me on, Jason. So, so since 2018, you've been on a tear. You know, we, you, you won five out of six, all finishes and all those wins. As you entered your sixth year in the sport in 2008, coming off a very difficult four-fight losing streak that cost you your spot in the UFC, did, did something change? You know, I, and I actually talked to Casey Kenny a couple of days ago. He, I asked him, does he feel anything stylistically looks different and has changed for you in that time? He didn't see anything. Is there any stylistic changes? Is is it just a mental switch for you, a mindset change that you, you know, that that has, has you at, on such a one of the best runs of your career? Um, I think it's um a big thing that happened for me was um, I stopped drinking. Uh, I was like drinking a lot um, when I was on that four fight losing streak. Um, I don't really know why I did it. I guess I was just looking for answers in alcohol. I thought it would like help me bounce back or whatever i thought that was like the it would help me handle it and it really didn't it really didn't provide any answers if anything it just made the weight cuts harder and it just wow yeah like it just it, it didn't help at all but um i don't i don't really know why i did it um but yeah you know i've given up drinking uh completely um i don't drink at all anymore and you know i've, I've had huge changes in my body my performance you know um my my practices i feel like i'm just i'm all around a way better athlete a way better fighter and i feel like it showed you know in this run um people have been having a real hard time with me you know i'm not perfect or anything but i feel like i've gotten a lot better did you, was it a type of thing that like it would you say you can consider yourself like an a full-blown alcoholic like you had to do 12 steps and all those kinds of things to get by it or it was more like something you had you can control and you were able to go cold turkey from it pretty easily um i was honestly probably on my way to like being full-blown alcoholic like i was on that road. like i would i would wake up at like nine o'clock do my first practice from like nine to eleven and then i would just get shit faced for the rest of the day wow. i'd day drink the rest of the day um go to like longs or whatever and like buy like um like the 12 packs or like a six liter or i'm um, sorry a, a liter and a half of wine or whatever the deal was and like i would just chug that the whole day what you know what the craziest thing is that you're only 28 years old and it feels like you've been around for so long because you've been fighting at these highest levels for so long so do you feel on some level did maturity you know play just getting older learning things meeting different people going through life experiences did it help you kind of get to that point to that realization like okay i gotta make a change you know would a 24 year old lewis smoka have made that change or it took going through life and experiencing the downs and everything to really understand that i think it i don't know man um honestly i didn't even want to give it up it was because my wife she saw like what i was going through so she sent me um so she was talking to my manager and stuff and like they're like what, what's wrong with lewis why is he losing he shouldn't be losing these fights what the fuck is going on you know <laughs> and so he's like he's drunk all the time like i don't know what to tell you like he won't listen to me and i wouldn't listen to her she we, we fought about it a lot like wow. we went like she tried to yeah like it was like a pretty pretty serious thing but um so she sent me to my manager jason's um jason house he was like all right like we got to do something different like th like after the fourth loss he's like we got to do something different like this isn't working you know yeah and so they um they sent me up to colin oyama's uh he's also from hawaii jason has a close relationship with him and so he was like will you take lewis and he's like and co coach was like i guess like i'll try to fix him you know i'll give it my best shot and like so right around that time like a lot of stuff happened i was separated from my family i was in a new environment um 
separated from my daughter. Um, the UFC cut me, so my job was gone. And it was just like it was like a it was just a bunch of things at once. And like I didn't even want to stop drinking. Like I was at Jason's house, and I was like like I I wasn't even taking it serious. Like I was just drunk at his house. Wow. So like I was, like the first two days of practice, I went through like his beer. I went through his cupboard. I found all his beer. <laughs> I started drinking it. I took like most of his thirty rack. And then he was like, what the fuck is going on? Like there was like beer cap. <laughs> And I was like, I didn't even think it was that many. Like, I was like, man, oh, it's a weekend. You know, like, what the fuck? Like, this is what I do. Like, this isn't even that big deal, bro. And he was like, no, this isn't okay. Like, you're you're over here getting shit-faced constantly. And it's like, it's not like, I don't know. He told me something. He told me, like, you shouldn't be celebrating right now, Lewis. You have nothing to celebrate. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't know if it was the way he said it or it was because, like, he was, like, an outside figure, like, impartial somewhat or... I don't really know exactly what it was, but for for whatever reason, that that sentence really resonated with me. I don't I don't know why. Like he told me, it's not like I was not supposed to be celebrating. This is like a like it's not a time to celebrate, Lewis. You're fucking up right now. And I don't know like I, I don't know why that that stuck with me. But for whatever reason, maybe it was the way he said it, how honest yeah. he was. I don't know. Like the way he looked me in the eye. I don't know what it was, but something about it like stuck with me. Hmm. And um. Yeah, so, like, I just, I don't know, man. At that point, like, my wife wasn't really talking to me. She was upset because I wasn't, like, trying to, like, clean myself up. And, like, so I just, I ended up, um, like, just trying my hardest. Um, And after, like, a couple weeks, I know it sounds cliche, but it was, like, it was, like, coming out of a fog or, like, coming out of a daze. And, like, I realized how badly I messed up. Like, the opportunity that I'd been given, that Dana, that the UFC, that Sean, that they'd given me to, like, to make something of myself. Like, I realized how bad I'd messed it up. I was kind of just throwing a tantrum, you know? And I don't know why, but, like, I came out of it, and I was like, oh, my fucking God. And, like, I just, I felt so bad about it. Like, I just felt like just such a little shithead. And, um, <laughs> like, I got through a tantrum like a freaking child. And then, so ever since then, like, I just, like, I was, I was like, I can't drink. Like, I can't have it anymore. Like... Maybe one day I'll, I'll get my shit back together and, you know, like, like I had like a couple of rules, like, but I'm not drinking until I like have a million dollars in my bank account. I win a world title <laughs> yeah. where I retire. That's it. Like, yeah. that's it. That's the only ways I'm going to, I'm going to drink again. And like, even then, I, I don't know, like, I don't know if I'm ready for it, but you know, like, that's like a bridge that I'll come, like I'll cross when I come to it, you know? Wow, that's that's amazing. I mean, I have a, a ton of respect to you. You know, I already had respect for you as a, a fighter, but now as a man, that's that's a fascinating. Um, you and Casey are both very good grapplers, but Casey is great at scrambling and staying off his back. So let's just say the area of the the fight, that area of the fight, maybe it's a wash and it stays standing. You are a guy that has proven you can be dangerous on the feet. Looking back at his resume, he really hasn't fought very dangerous strikers in in a, in a few years now. When I talked to him, he had a lot. Of confidence wherever the fight goes, do you feel like you may have a big advantage of standing and that advantage he may be underestimating when it comes fight night? Mm. <laughs> so he might fight, it just it depends. It depends on how he decides to fight me. Mm-hmm. Like he might try to wrestle and then like try to like start using the striking later or he might open with the striking to to take down the rat um to 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 he might he might start using the striking first to open the wrestling um it could go a lot of different ways you know um i'm not and he's like he's a young dude he hasn't been in the ufc that long so like we're still kind of learning and we're seeing what casey kenny is really about you know um, we look at his record. He's got a lot of decisions. I think it's like seven of his past eight or decisions or something like that. Like he's got a lot of decisions. Um, but he's a tough dude, man. He comes out there and you know, his first, his two UFC wins, like you can't really fault the guy for going to decision both times the dudes miss weight against him. So it's like, you know, and I mean, he's not the biggest guy. So for them to miss weight against him, like it's a huge size disadvantage for him and he still pulled it off. So I'm like, I have a lot of respect for the guy. I'm like, I, like I, I think he's about it, you know. Like for to to beat people that miss that miss weight against you, especially at our size, it's like missing weight's a big deal, man. Like yeah. people don't get it, but not cutting that last five pounds makes a humongous difference. Like it it, it affects how your weight bounces back up, the amount the, how you're able to rehydrate. It affects like it affects how your muscles work. It affects like the salt levels, you know, to to fire to explode, like. 
And so for him to like to go to to have to to fight people that have these advantages over him and to still go out there and get it done, like I have a ton of respect for that kid. You know, I think it's gonna be a tough fight. Um, but I think that I do think that I, I finish him. I think that I'm just I think I just I believe in myself. I think I'm the better fighter. Now, and he's he's talked to me past. He's mentioned before. He feels he's very w well rounded. You mentioned right now. You feel like you finish him. Do you see things in him? I like the fight with Marab. He just had. Obviously, he had trouble with like Marab's constant grinding style, going for takedowns with like twenty five takedowns in the fight, pushing that kind of pace. Like that's not your style per se. But do you feel from watching video scouting with Colin Oyama that there are clear weaknesses in the game that give you that belief? Oh yeah, I'm gonna finish this dude. Yeah, um, I honestly think he might be underestimating me too. I'm a little bit different. Like, mm. there's, there's, like, I'm just, I'm a different fighter. I'm, I'm, I'm not, like, you, you, you don't really know what I am until you're in there with me. Mm. Like, I, I'm a little bit different. Um, and I don't think he's ready for it. it, it every time that I, I go with someone, like after that first time, they're like, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> and I think that, like, he's he's a, he's going to see something that he's not ready for. It's just it's going to be everything. It's going to be the pace, the movement, the the situations that I use, the setups that I use, the technique, the way that I flow from one thing to another, the way that I'm constantly attacking, the way my hips move, the way my body moves. I think it's just it's going to be a lot for him, and he's just not really going to understand yet what's happening to him as it's happening to him. You haven't fought since September, so it, it will be about eight months uh, of a hiatus for you because you lost that fight that you were going to have in, in Ohio for March. Has this been like a tough time financially by not fighting for this long or having been in the game for a while? You know, you've wisened up long ago in terms of like how you use your purses, making them work for you long term and things aren't too bad having to sit out for this long. Um, yeah, you know, um, I, I try to be pretty frugal with my money. Um, being able to pick and shoot, like, so yeah, I did learn. Like, at, when I was a young kid, I'm not gonna lie, I blew all my money. Like, I didn't yeah, have Yeah, everybody does. I <laughs> yeah. I made it to the UFC on Rich Night. <laughs> but, um, so when, like, but over time, like, you know, being a dad and stuff, like, having a child to provide for, like, I've yes. learned to budget, I've learned to, like, yes to not just blow my money to, you know, to save. And um, it hasn't been that hard for us. I mean, I want to get her a house this year. I want to get my daughter a house this year. So that's something that I'm really looking forward to. And so I'm like really excited for this opportunity. I feel really lucky to have this opportunity to go out there and make some money, especially in the situation, like the world's financial or economic situation. Yeah. So I feel like really, really lucky, really blessed to have this opportunity. Um, but you know it's not like I, i'm out here like struggling you know i i'm okay but um yeah, yeah like i learned to save my money i learned to budget um i honestly didn't even want to fight again until um till the summer just because like i had plans to not fight again until the summer just because i'm i just historically do better in warmer climates man <laughs> like, i don't know <laughs> From Hawaii, dude. I like the warmer climates. I don't like the yeah. cold. It's like fuck, dude. Everybody says fuck. Like they don't want to go to New England. It's too fucking cold. Like it's it's. I don't know what yeah. it is. Like you don't like you don't warm up as well, or you know your blood's <laughs> not flowing the same. Whatever it is, I don't like the cold, man. <laughs> So when, when I talked to, to Casey, he said it was about, you know, three weeks ago, he really started getting into more serious kind of camp training and stuff like that. And he, when I talked to him, he just found out about being matched up with you like two days prior. Like what has your kind of training and everything been for you where you are during the whole pandemic and stuff like that? Have you been going hard for, for the same amount of time, maybe longer? And how, you know, when did you first hear about, oh yeah, you're pa paired up with Casey? Uh, I found out on Wednesday. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, I feel good. Um, I've been working hard through the whole thing, you know, maybe not necessarily fight camp shape, but, or fight camp training, but, um, like, I don't stop training, dude. I'm like, I'm, I'm here to be the best that I can be, you know, I don't, mm. I don't really ever stop. Like, I take it easier at some points, work hard at some points, but I don't really ever stop. I'm always ready to fight. So I like I never really like veered off from that. Um, it, there was like 
one week right when the 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 lockdown started like i geeked out for like a week on all the conspiracy theories and i was just fucking like like reading all the youtube videos like watching all the youtube videos and stuff and i was like all right this is done i'm done, I'm done with this like the world hasn't ended yet I'm, out. I'm done with this i gotta i gotta get back to work <laughs> in the last few years, Hawaiian MMA has really taken another step forward in the sport. You know, the respect level has has sort of moved away from just you know it's BJ. BJ was the guy. BJ's the big star. Everybody's kind of out of his his shadow now with great talents like Max Holloway, Lee Malay McFarlane, Ray Cooper being champions in major organizations. You've been carrying that flag proudly for years. Is it cool? to be a part of pushing the, the state as a legit hotbed for MMA talent and seeing all, all these other Hawaiians take lead roles in the sport, you know, recently. Um, yeah, dude, Hawaii, Hawaii has been, been into the game for like as long as anybody, man. Um, it's been around for so long. Um, I remember being a kid and, um, and we used to have fights at the Blaisdell. This was back in the days when, like, Robbie Lawler would fight. Like, like when Anderson upkicked Yushin that was in Hawaii. Like, mm -hmm. like for Brawl Icon days back in, like, 2003 or whatever. They used to sell out the Blaisdell when there was fights. Like, you couldn't even get tickets. Like, it was, like, a special thing to have nosebleeds. Like, you couldn't get tickets to this thing. <laughs> and, um, like, they would just, they would pack it. And it was like Hoy has been Hoy has such a long history with MMA, and it's been it's like so revered in, in like in like Hoy's culture and stuff that it's like I'm I wouldn't say like like I'm just a part of it. I'm proud to be a part of it, and like it's kind of crazy because like at first I didn't really care too much. I was just like yeah, I'm just another guy. But now they're starting to be kids. They're like telling me like oh yeah, I want to grow up and I want to be like you or like wow. I want. Like, they, like there's like kids that'll come to our gym and they're like, yeah, I want to be like you, you know, I want to, I want to train, I want, I want, I want the life that you guys have. In my head, I'm like, what? You can't do better than me. But, <laughs> 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 like, but, um, like, you know, it, it, it is kind of like a surreal moment when that kind of stuff happens because you start to realize, like, oh man, like I'm making a difference in these kids' lives, like, for better or for worse, and hopefully they can learn from my mistakes and you know do better than me. And so it's kind of like. It, it, it is a proud moment, and, you know, like, I'm just trying to do the best that I can with it now, you know? Is there any, you know, mention that going back to, you know, the, the, the region becoming even more important and stuff like that, is there any, like, slight level of small bit of jealousy that Bellator is getting to put on events in the blaze oh, yeah, <laughs> and the yeah, UFC is not? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, straight up. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah uh, I, I'm happy for everybody because, you know, all the local boys, they get, like, a lot of my friends get to fight on that card. You know, my, mm. my old gym, Hawaii Elite MMA, they got, like, they put on, like, what, half the card sometimes? Like, <laughs> yeah guys or something seven guys mm -hmm. over like two days and i'll say so like you know it's um and then there's gracie tag next where max trains at i um rylan lazar is a school I, I went over there too you know um rylan was my jits coach for like years mm -hmm. and so like just to like to see everybody like that i trained with get like a chance on like the bigger stages to prove themselves it's yeah. it's pretty awesome i'm happy for them i'm just like man i wish i could have done it too but like i'm happy for them <laughs> I, I've talked to, to Tyson M on this, and that is the Iridium guys pushing the Manscaped trimmer. And Tyson was killing it with the Manscaped social posts. Then you came along and completely blew him out of the water a few months back with a social post manscaping every piece of hair on your body except for the top of your head. Was that video to lay claim to the spot of MMA Manscaped King? And also, is there not enough credit fighters get for manicuring themselves before a fight? <laughs> um... <laughs> i like to shave myself all right so this is a tradition that i had back at like 125 when i would be mm -hmm. real desperate to like i get real desperate at 125 i'm over here looking at my fingernails like oh man oh that's like too right there yeah that's really dense dude like look at my fingernails those are dense like because i'm just i'm cut so deep you know i'm like skin and bone at that point i start getting real <laughs> 
that's the best way I can put it. I get real desperate to get that weight off. And like, I'm looking yeah. for anything that's not me in the sauna. You know, if I can get off 0.2 by shaving my body and cutting my nails, <laughs> that's 0.2. That's like 10 minutes that I don't have to be in the sauna. That's 10 minutes that I don't have to like bake my brain. You know, <laughs> I don't have to suffer through. And like, it's just, um, it, I, 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 to me, that was natural. That's something that I naturally do. And so Manscaped yeah. wanted to come in and be like, hey, bro, we've got this improved product for you so you don't have to nick your ball sack. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> like, you don't have to nick your ball sacks when you, sh when you shave. I'm like, oh, word? <laughs> I'm along with something like this and they're like yeah so like to me that's kind of like organic i was like all right you're gonna give me a trimmer all right i'm gonna shave my whole body with it you know like that's just how it is 